What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man Goldie. Goldie, really happy to be doing this with you. We're overdue to have done a show again together. Um, Goldie, for, for those of you guys, you, most of you all know Goldie from our site. And uh, Goldie is, the, you know, he's he's awesome. He's incredibly knowledgeable and in, in depth um, about the MLB, especially. He's also created aggregate projections that I hope everybody's using that, that is really, really wonderful for, for, I mean, I use it for golf and for baseball, especially. But we are the only site out there aggregating all of the information throughout the industry. And they, you get the most accurate uh, projection numbers, the most accurate ownerships, all that stuff. And uh, we really appreciate everything you're doing. So, Goldie, really happy to be here with you, really impressed by what you're doing and uh, ready to get into a big slate today. Yeah, man, I'm really stoked about it. We've uh, we've been working really hard on the projections and and aggregating everything and, and trying to get them up for as many sports and slates as possible. Um, so as you mentioned, as of right now, we've got them up for baseball, notably um, DK only at the moment, working mm -hmm. on on the other sites of the background. But um, yeah, baseball and and golf are are up uh, every week and. Uh, we did do it for for football this season, this last season as well. So um, as we get into, you know, keep growing and everything, hopefully we'll be able to add in, um, you know, everything that we can. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm stoked for a big slate today. We got, um, you know, some less uh, less interesting game theory pricing decisions to go over, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man, uh, I'm I'm ready to get into it. How about you? Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's let's jump into it. We're gonna go game by game. We're gonna talk about uh, how Goldie likes things. Like we, we do things very differently, but I, I love I love the uh, projection based stuff. And the, I mean, obviously, I work with sheets all the time. So talking about this stuff is really interesting. Um, but we'll go game by game and 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 go from there. Let's see. The first one we have for you is you got Toronto, New York. Yeah, I got Toronto and New York right up at the top, and. Um, Interesting pitching matchup here. I think uh, both of these guys coming off a, a two really good games, right? We've had Kikuchi, who's been just a, a punching bag for us for the last couple of seasons, mm -hmm. definitely all of last year. Um, and then Domingo Herman, he he's often somebody we can target going after on the mound with stacks as well. But uh, both of these guys, Kikuchi struck out like nine in his last start against the Rays. Yeah, Herman really was. encouraging, and Herman struck out like eleven, who may may or may not have had something on his hands as well. <laughs> um, so, I mean, uh, it, yeah, at least from my standpoint, right off the bat, uh, I'm intrigued with the price tag on Kikuchi here. Um, normally, of course, every number is going to tell us to to stack the Yankees here um, against him. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's fine. Now the the velocity is, is up a, a couple of ticks, and his first couple of starts have looked okay. Um, he's had one good start, of course, one kind of mediocre start, and then and then one like last year type of start. So uh, I think there's still a lot of variance here with Kikuchi, but at 71, I think we're kind of starved for a little bit of value on the mound today. Um, you know, in this lower 7K range, I think it's an interesting tournament piece if some of the velocity could play. Yeah. Um, however, you know, we can absolutely get to the other side with the Yankees still too, right? Because, um, you know, all these guys are, you know, price-wise attainable. We can get to a Glaber and, and some DJ Volpe leading off for sure. Mm -hmm. And we're not, you know, judge obviously. Um, and if, if Kikuchi is still going to give up this kind of power, I mean, uh, I like getting after him for sure. So I think you could play some interesting both sides uh, of of Kikuchi and the Yankees. Um, and same sort of thing with Domingo Herman. I mean, I, like, sure you want to play him, but honestly, I'm I'm in, more interested in in taking Blue Jay stacks on the other side. Like, he's not going to strike out 11 again. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's certainly not against Toronto. So I'd rather stack Toronto than get to any Domingo Herman. But uh, yeah, where are you standing? Yeah, I think that this one, I mean, I, I get the argument for both of the pitching spend downs. I think this is probably going to end up being a cross off for me. Yeah. Um, you do have 10 mile an hour winds blowing in from center. It is still a great hitters park, so it's not like terrible. You know what I mean? And um, it's still fine to, uh, to take hitters here. I just I, I just think there's other spots I like better. So this is sort of on the on the side, you know, for me right now, if, unless I want to try and get creative. And and I and I don't think there's anything wrong with with taking a shot at Kikuchi. It's really hard. I just don't play pitchers against Toronto in general. And I know people like it, it's sort of funny because like you look at their people look at a lot of their team totals, but like 
you know, there's like Springer wasn't there half the year. You know what I mean? There's a lot, a lot of guys weren't there for a part of the season last year. And I, and I just think that um, overall, there's just not a team that I like to mess with. So I'm probably on a big slate going to stay away from this one. But I certainly understand the argument for, and for you know, both sides, act, actually pretty much on every side of this game. Um, and I think if I had to pick one that I was most interested in other than, uh, you know, in the, in the game, I think that it would probably be to try and take some shots on the Yankees righties against Kikuchi. But I'm going to, as of right now, probably be off of it is my, is my current plan. Yeah, I'm mostly with you there. Like, I'm super not not excited at all about playing Kikuchi. Um, I mean, most I would get was probably like five teams or so, you know, like, and definitely would side with the Yankees in in most scenarios as well. But uh, I think the Blue Jays could be intriguing here. Um, if the Yankees ownership kind of steams later in the day, you know, maybe we could get on to some Jays uh, as a contrarian play or something. Yep, absolutely. Um all right, uh, which one you got next here? I've got the uh, I got Colorado and Philly. Okay, well there there's another one. Uh, yeah, so so start this one off and then uh, let, let us know what you're doing here because I think this is going to be where a lot of people want to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Obviously, we've got uh, we got Noel on the mound uh, for the Phils um, targeting Colorado, and we saw what Matt Strom did to him yesterday in five and a third. Right, he struck out eleven. He's had electric mm -hmm. stuff last night. Um, yep. Now we're seeing 45, 50% ownership on Aaron Nola so far. That makes me a little bit nervous. It always kind of does with Nola. I love the guy, but there's there's some variance with him. And when we eat a lot of ownership on Nola, you know, despite the, you know, he's got excellent stuff. It's not the stuff that's the problem. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is <laughs> sometimes with Nola, to be honest, you know, it's hard, hard to tell right now. I'm sort of with you. Yeah. Yeah. So he hasn't been great to start the season, nor has Wheeler, to be honest. So something in the water over in Philly, I guess. But, um, you know, over here for the Rockies, Noah Davis, young arm for them. Um, definitely. He, he's not going to be a target on the mound, despite an attractive price tag. Um, he's got gas and he, and he's got high upside for the future. Um, Decent slider, and he keeps the ball. He's supposed to keep the ball down in the strike zone, um, so it could be valuable. We saw what, a, like a good changeup, good off speed, and and good breaking stuff can do, to really to any any lineup in baseball. And it and Ryan Feltner yesterday, um, really neutralized them pretty good. So it's possible that that Noah Davis could could get a five five and two thirds or something out of this tonight. But uh, I, same thing with Toronto. Um, I not a lineup I generally like going after. Um, they're dangerous over here, and I would and most patient. likely side and and very patient. It, exactly right. They they walk down here um, in aggregate against against righties so far this season. You know, walking at an eight percent clip, one eleven WRC plus. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, still still very patient, very dangerous over here, despite kind of shit in the bed uh quite a bit yesterday expensive yeah. if you want to get to a stack 61 for trey 6k for schwarber 49 for castellanos they like, you know you gotta pay for these guys brandon marsh at 47 is like a throw-up price but yeah you know not my favorite stack to get to just because of the pricing on a huge slate but uh, the upside is there absolutely attacking a young young arm over here in no davis um with nola i think i'm probably going to come in underweight on this i just i don't like very high ownership on him. And I think there's some other arms in this range that we can play. We'll get to them later, but uh, I like the price tag. It's okay. And certainly the matchup is, doesn't bother me at all, but mm -hmm. um, it's mostly the ownership. And, and anytime we see a, a median projection and over 20 points, I start to balk a little bit. Yeah. So that's kind of where I am. I'll probably come in under on Nola, no Rockies pretty much at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm really surprised that, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Nola, first of all, like I'm trying to figure it out myself, uh, has not even a, a reasonable start we would take the season yet. Yeah. Um, I I still am probably like, I think the ownership will get lower on him. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I just think that I, I have a hard time believing that people are going to keep, because because everybody's overreactive in the FS, you know what I mean? And after three starts, they decide someone's terrible and they don't have it anymore. I'm just curious where they're going to end up. The hard part is like the Rockies have just barely a three implied run total. Like it's just 3.05. Um, yeah. Vegas has it at that. That's uh that's they're going to target him. So it's just going to be, a, is he going to be 25 or 30 or is he going to be 55 or 60? That that's, that's if he's 25 or 30, I'm fine with being at the field or potentially even above it at 50 or six, 50% or, or 45 plus 
kind of would rather be under that, especially, you know, what we've seen so far this season. But as of right now, I do have Nola as one of the pitching priorities just for what it's worth. And I have I have Philly as one of the best decks and in kind of a blessing in disguise if you like Philly today. And and I, by the way, I'm, I'm mixing in Noah Davis. If, if it, I'll, I'll have him in one of the $15 or something like that. I'm going to throw him into one thing. Sure. Uh, guy, guy they've never seen before. Uh, looked good his first start out there. Obviously, doesn't, you know, you know, you wouldn't think he has a huge leash, but he threw 95 pitches. Um, I'm I'm totally cool with taking a shot on totally going against what I believe and and just okay, I'll just take a flyer on this guy at no ownership. But more importantly, I think that the main priority would be the Philly stack. Um, but it is gonna be strange to to get it in because you're 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 paying, you know, six like you said, six K for get two guys at 6k then you get the 4900 Castellanos and 4700 for Marsh which no one's going to pay for I don't think even if they yep. stack this team I don't think they're playing those guys mostly um so I like Philly as a stack I'm going to have to wait to see where I, where I stand later I, I I always have this this approach with young you know up and coming pitchers that well okay let's you know if they're if they're going against a patient team I am always going to take a shot in stacking that team even if the, the the guy like I did it even a few times last year against guys who it had almost no chance of succeeding with like against Strider. Um, but I think that in this spot, I, I, I would, I would, I do want to take, I do have some interest because Philly's patient. If he gets in trouble at all with his control, I think he walked three guys in his first start in five innings. Um, I'm not sure if I have that right actually in front of me. And uh, yeah, so, so I have Philly as one of, as one of these stacks. Yeah. He walked three in five innings. Um, Philly is one of the stacks, but I think that I think there's other stacks that I like a little bit better. And because their run to, run total is so high, I do think people are going to try to squeeze them in. They're just probably going to leave off the Alec Baum betting seventh. Uh, they're probably going to leave off Brandon Marsh at 4,700. And I think even some people will leave off Castellano. So I have Philly as one of the stacks, though, that I will be playing today. Yeah, you can definitely get different with it for sure. Uh, I mean, even yesterday on a five game slate. Uh, Castellanos and Brandon Marsh, Jake Cave, Josh Harrison, all these guys came in pretty ignored. So um, if you want to get to Philly, now naturally today that that ownership is going to be you know quite a bit higher. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's ch- there's cheaper pieces down here. Josh Harrison is actually at a, a pretty decent start to the season. Jake Cave, uh, as well, has always hit righties well. So um, yeah, I. As a matter of fact, I do kind of like the price tag on Alec Bohm down here. Uh, JTR, that's fine at 54, um, yeah. you know, on a, on a full slate. So, yeah, I, I don't mind this at all. And and like I said, I, I think you can throw in some Noah Davis as well. He, he's stretched out and he is a full on starter. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to take shorts on the Phillies, too, I, I think that, I think it's a fine approach. Doesn't I think we're yeah. kind of on the same page here. Yeah, I think it's an interesting gamble for sure. Um all right. Next up, do you have the Baltimore? Do you have, or do you have the? I have. Uh, I, yeah, I got Detroit and Baltimore. Let's uh, let's get into yeah, Michael into Lorenzen. This, this is one I think that I have some interest in here. Yeah, for sure. Michael Lorenzen. He got beat up pretty good in his first start, um, coming off of injury, and we've really been able to target Lorenzen pretty much at will ever since they they put him into a rotation. Um, he just doesn't have any raw whiff stuff, right? He's got an okay swinging strike rate and, but you know, the, the aggregate CSW percentage here really leaves quite a bit on the table for me. Um, doesn't have any chase in him whatsoever, despite the fact that he's throwing about 14 different pitches. So the walk rate is still high for him. Um, he doesn't really get on the barrel too much and, and stays off of really a lot of the hard contact. So that's encouraging, but there's really just not a lot of upside. And at 59, I think there's a couple other guys, Noah Davis probably being one of them that you could much rather get to. And number one, you don't want to be targeting Baltimore. Uh, on the other side, we got Tyler Wells. You could probably play him in tournaments today. I think, you know, the upside is absolutely limited in general um, with just an 18% aggregate K rate, but the kid throws strikes and he really stays off of the barrel. Um, he is susceptible to some right-handed power. So if we see this ownership on him in early runs coming in at 15%, we see that start to see to steam a little bit, then I think you can take some righties against him, notably like a Torque or a Javi Baez, um, mm-hmm. get into some lefties like a, a Kerry Carpenter or a Nick Maton. They hit righties very well. And it's a, in deeper tournament stuff, I think getting to a couple of Tigers pieces is probably okay. But definitely the, the main focus here is going to be the Orioles. Um, 
their prices have, have come down a little bit from really their peaks early in the season. Cedric 56, Rutch 55, Mountcastle 49. Uh, expensive for sure, but Santander, Adam Frazier hitting in the five hole for some reason at 29 is playable. Uh, Gunner still at 38, but um, all the upside in the world for him as well. And and plenty of plenty of turnover upside, so to speak, on the at the bottom half of the lineup. Um, with some speed down there, Jorge Mateo and, and guys like that, that you can really wrap it around and are never really played. So um, mm-hmm. I like I like the O's here for sure, because Lorenzen pitching to a, a good bit of contact, and really not going to blow it by many people. Favorites would be the lefties, but um, you know, you can stack the whole, the whole country here and, and yeah. go after Lorenzen. So um, I like some sneaky offense from the Tigers, but uh, mostly just uh, Baltimore, maybe some Tyler Wells pieces. Yeah, I like I like everything you said there. Um, I, I think that uh, I, I I do think like I mean a guy like Baez at thirty four hundred. I, I think you could talk yourself into um, certainly yeah. it seems reasonable enough to me. Um, he hasn't run this year, which is weird. Like he, he, with everybody running more, you'd think that he was. I mean, he was the guy who was looking to run all the time before, and he's just it's just sort of fading away in his career. So it's one reason well, gotta, I love him in general. Yeah, you got to get on base first to to, to run. That's true. That's base. fair. That's, that's, he's he's been fun. he's been very frustrating and very bad. So, that's, that's, um, yeah. But you know, against Tyler Wells, like he's not going to blow it by him, right? And, um, pretty low strikeout rate, just fifteen percent against right-handers for Tyler Wells. He'll give up some hard contact. He'll give up some pop to the right side. So if anybody. If Javi Baez is going to get into anybody, it's going to be somebody like this. So yeah. uh, I think it's a fine play. And a 3,400, he's, he's cheap enough now that we can take these kind of shots, I think. Yeah, and I think Baltimore is my uh, is definitely one of my top stacks today. I actually prefer them at the moment over Philly. I have them both rated very highly. But of the stacks, of the stacks we talked about, I, I mean, and, and you can go all the way through, like you said, uh, some, some bottom of, of the order uh, upside for their lineup. Uh, also, not showing them. You know, because it is a big slate, but like I thought that they would, I, I really thought that Toronto and Baltimore would have, you know, would be two of the higher highest owned teams and they might be, but like you have only, you know, looking at your projections right now, we've only got Rushman as a, the only double digit owned player. I'm very happy to stack Baltimore here. And I think it's only a matter of time before they start. Well, I don't understand why they don't now, but I would, you know, swap Gunnar Henderson with Adam Frazier in their lineup and make, make a little more sense. Um but, yeah. uh, but but I like the lineup all the way through, and I am uh, I am very very high on the Orioles today, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, I mean they had Gunner in the five to start out the season, right? But he's been so cold. Um, they're really just trying to like move him down, get him going a little bit, and actually Adam Frazier's been making <laughs> a bit more contact this season. Um, so it's understandable just trying to like calm Gunner down, I think a little bit. But admittedly, a thirty eight hundred dollar price tag for a seven hole hitter at home on a big favorite is generally not all that attractive. Um, but this is it, like, he's been the the top hitting prospect in baseball for several seasons now. Yeah. So um, like he'll be, he'll be fine. And Lorenzen's not going to, not going to wipe him out, you know, mm. um, like he might induce some soft contact for sure. But uh, I think taking shots on Gunner and, and pretty much all of the Orioles, like you said, at uh, sub 10% ownership, I mean, sign me up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh let's get on to probably a quick game here. I think we might be able to get through Miami and Cleveland. I think we um, just say what the hell is happening. We don't play it. Exactly. You know, I don't want to go after Cleveland number one. Braxton Garrett's got problems with righties number two, and we got terrible weather in this game. So I don't want anything to do with that. And please act, I very rarely play this guy and certainly not on a twelve game slate. Um and certainly not in a weather game. So no thank you all the way around. Yeah, I just don't see any argument for even trying to like analyze this thing like even even if the game were to play and and it was fine like i don't really have interest anyway and yeah. on top of it like you have ugly hitting weather and i don't really want to play these pitchers so i, yeah. I really don't know what i would be doing if i was trying if i was playing this game um i i guess like the truth is i, I think because the weather is so bad for hitters i guess if, the, if you get a full go ahead and we're, we're totally clear i actually don't think please hack at 6500 is unreasonable but there's just sure. no reason on this slate to get into that kind of creativity i don't think um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, if anything, honestly, I, I would like some Miami pieces if we didn't have weather to worry about. Um, like, I always like playing Cleveland. Well, I hate playing Cleveland, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I like playing Cleveland because they make so much contact. Um, right. And Braxton Garrett is susceptible to mm-hmm. some right-handed power. 
So they've got some guys and they can platoon against him. But um, in most scenarios, I think I'd be on Miami. I really like Jazz uh, against right-handers. I like Luis Arise. I love playing Luis Arise. Um, And Georgie Soler looks a little bit healthier this year and is showing a good bit of pop. I mean, the guy hit 50 bombs a couple of years ago. You know, yeah, people like, don't realize exactly how, how how good this guy was. Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, so, but yeah, but most of all, it's uh like it's 45 degrees and rainy or whatever in Cleveland. I'm just, I'm off of all of it, unfortunately. Happy to skip it here. Yeah. All right. Let's move over to uh to, to a game. I know you've got some takes on it. I think we're actually going to be in agreement, which is probably going to be different than the field. So why don't you talk a little bit about this Houston Atlanta game? Yeah, I'm interested here, man. Like, um, okay. The number one, Hunter Brown is 9,800 and he's like flat overpriced. Uh, like, let's not get crazy here. We, you know, this is still a really young arm and Atlanta is one of the best offenses in baseball. Um, so generally we're not too crazy about going after the Braves. However, when we do go after them, we normally want to go after them with right-handers and we want to go after them with guys that can throw it past them. And they still strike out a crap load, man. Like we're talking early going here, 25% against right-handers they're walking a good bit full 10 percent here um but not hitting for a ton of power just yet against the right side and not creating just a 104 wrc plus so attackable for sure and we know hunter brown this is one of the top arm prospects in baseball as well he throws strikes he stays off the barrel keeps the ball down in the strike zone really good three pitch mix here and he's got k stuff man hasn't given up any power yet still a short sample sure but um, I'm very, I'm very encouraged with what I've seen so far from him this season, despite mm-hmm. that, you know, kind of clunker against Detroit or whatever. Yeah. First game. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, whatever. So, uh, but 9,800, I think is a really, really shrewd tournament piece here. Um, you know, a decent pivot from the Nola and the John Gray, who we'll get to and down off of a Freddie Peralta and, and the Shohei Otani, you know, he's right in this kind of awkward range where I don't think he's going to get played. And the upside for 30 here is absolutely there. So I think I'm going to try and, and get to a good bit of Hunter Brown and really less on the Braves. I don't like this pricing over here, man. Like these guys are expensive outside of Acuna. Like I'll play him against everybody, but you really want to pay 58 for Matt Olson and, and, and 49 for Sean Murphy. Like, no, thank you. Um, not against a guy that's going to blow it past him. Like Olson strikes out a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> like uh, no, thanks. So um, I like Hunter Brown. I'm going to side with him. Uh, on the mound here, definitely, almost certainly no Bryce Elder. I think he's overpriced too, but the matchup is just markedly worse. So give me Hunter Brown against the Braves and probably some Astros pieces too. Um, you know, of course we like Jordan and, and Kyle Tucker always, but mm-hmm. um, you know, mostly on the Astros here and in, in the markets right now, they're about pick them. Uh, I think this is a pretty decent spot to take a shot on the Strohs. What do you think? Yeah. The Astros, I have a little bit further down my list. They're on there. Um, sure. And, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice day in Atlanta. It's 80 degrees, but it, you know, again, 10 mile an hour winds blowing in from center. Just, just, just always want to throw this stuff out there. Cause it does make a little bit of a difference. And I think, you know, if, if that, that wind's going the other direction, the game probably has a run and a half higher total. True. Um, I, I, I like the Hunter Brown idea. Um, I'm going to talk myself into this uh, today. Like think, just think about it from this perspective. Let's say Nola really is 45% in tone tonight. And Hunter Brown is three percent owned. You're telling me that one out of fifteen times Hunter Brown isn't going to outscore him? hundred <laughs> percent. It just yep. makes it's it's just absolutely the right strategic thing to do to to include some Hunter Brown. It is scary with Atlanta, but they also do have strikeouts in their lineup. It's not like these guys don't strike out. Especially this is a pitcher they've never faced. He's been over ninety pitches in all of his three starts through ninety nine in his last one. I, I'm totally on board with taking the the, the weird gamble with the Hunter Brown. And, and and it's funny because Atlanta is one of those teams that they're it's di- they're different than the Dodgers than than, than Philly in the pe- well Philly last year I'm thinking of but also this you know once they if they had Bryce Harper back with this lineup it would be the same thing this year um, who are some other teams like this that are patient the Mets um, where Atlanta I don't mind taking pitchers against them a little bit more often because they do have a few more guys willing to chase outside the zone absolutely. Um, even though there's a ton of power there. So I'm not going to play this, the scared game. I will have Hunter Brown in some lineups. I put him on my list very high up, even before you mentioned it. So the fact that you were onto it too, uh, I'm definitely going to have some exposure there. 
And uh, just Houston is probably going to end up being like the seventh or eighth stack I would consider, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to be high enough to where they're going to be relevant for me. Yeah, I kind of agree there too. Um, like I'm always going to play Jordan. I, I have exposure to him every single day. I'm not wild about a 5,800 Kyle Tucker here, you know, like admittedly, but uh, Bryce Elder is not going to throw it by either one of these guys. Uh, 17% K rate to the left side, little more susceptible to the right side, 26% K rate. Um, you know, so some of these righties from, from Houston, I'm not super excited about either, but I'm with you on, on full stacks. It'd probably just be short stacks and mostly just like one-off pieces of somebody like super cheap, maybe, uh, maybe a Corey Jolks, uh, if he, if he gets some maybes today, um, with a Jordan or with a Kyle Tucker, but man, 58 for Kyle. I, I love Kyle Tucker, but let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's slow down a little bit at 5,800, I think. Um, Absolutely. but yeah, I, I love Hunter Brown. Uh, I'm I'm definitely going to be forcing him in. He's overpriced for sure for such a young arm, but like he has all the upside in the world going forward. Um, and he may not be overpriced for this particular matchup, you know, like you said, we, so. That's right. We, 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 we don't even know necessarily for sure that he's overpriced. Spencer Strider. I remember people when, when he was uh, getting going last year and they made him the most expensive pitcher on like the third slate he pitch and people were like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you're all going to play him anyway. <laughs> like we all know the upside is there. So um, that's all we're playing. That's what we're playing for is the upside. So Definitely. yeah, what feels better? Like, and I understand we're going to get in. So, so this is another, another interesting one who's going to have some ownership. Yep. So I actually have always been on the, I think John Gray is going to be better than he, than, than he looks all the time. He just can't quite consistently get it together, but you think about John Gray, you know, I know he's a little bit cheaper, but he's still expensive. But he's going to be 25 percent now and you're going to get two percent on on what's his name i think you just got to take gambles like that so I, i'm just jumping in i'll let you talk about the next game but i just wanted to throw that out john gray versus brown does brown outperform him by enough here not uh, like you know one out of ten times of course he does like absolutely it's yep. not even a question for me i know it's i know it's oakland and, and, I, and i do have some interest in gray uh, i'll just keep this one short i have interest in gray and i have interest in uh texas i i just i can't i guess i, I you know i can't quit them <laughs> they, they just keep putting up a million runs even without uh without seager so uh I, I do have texas as one of the stacks that i'm looking at and i do have john gray as in play but i'm not like excited about the john gray at 9100 and uh i feel pretty good though about taking some shots with texas how do you feel about this one yeah i'm i'm mostly on the same page here uh we're not touching JP here. We're going to stack against him all the time. Um, no whiff stuff gives up power to the righties and doesn't strike out any lefties. Um, and, and you're right, man, Texas, like I've mentioned it in, in a couple of the vids that I've, I've been doing, they were cold to start the season and whatever it was like with Seager going down, like the best hitters now out of the lineup. And now all of a sudden they're scoring 25 runs a game, you know? So, right. um, frustrating but like they're fun to play they're, this is a really good baseball team over here and a really sneaky good lineup yep. um they they are going to be a little i mean they're on everybody's radar for sure yeah uh but probably not i mean it's a 12 game slate you know not not every team uh is going to be 10 percent owned so um i think we can get to them there's you know Semyon is 57 he's expensive for sure adelise garcia is 53 that's very attainable for him um, Nate Lowe hit, hits lefties. Great. He actually hits lefties better than he hits righties, to be honest. And they've got cheap pieces like a Leody Tavares, Bubba Thompson, Zeke Duran that they can, um, mix into the lineup, obviously Jonah Heim behind the plate. So a very workable stack here, Josh Young, of course, probably the, the best play, um, price adjusted on the entire team in the five hole. So yeah. Texas for sure. They're going to be, as of right now, we're showing them, um, under 10%, probably increase a little bit throughout the day but uh correlated pieces here with john gray i think are perfectly fine and i might be a little bit higher on gray in this spot than you um i'm higher on gray i think today than i am on nola which is kind of weird because nola, <laughs> gets the, yeah. nola the nola because nola gets the rockies well and he's 50 percent owned um i do like gray i've always loved him he's always had a killer slider the problem with him is fastball command and a pretty weak four seamer here. Uh, basically just a break even pitch relative to the rest of the league. And he's always had a bit of trouble getting out lefties because of the lack of a really, really good changeup. He's developed this in the last couple of seasons. And that's why he's been so frustrating to play. Uh, mostly because he played all of his games at Coors Field. But 
he has had some problems with lefties and it's getting on the barrel and it's floating this change up a little bit and poor fastball command. So there's been some variance definitely with John Gray, but I think what I think what's going to happen is we'll likely see Nola's ownership steam a little bit, and that will come off of John Gray. And I think that'll allow us to get him at about 15 to 20% today. And I think that's an attainable number uh, ownership wise. I think he should, probably should be in one in every five to six teams that we build. Um, definitely in cash, I would prefer him over Nola. I mean, play both of them. But um, in tournaments, I think he's he's definitely playable at 91. I like the tag for him. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I don't want to be paying 98, 9,700 for him or whatever it is a lot of the time. But I, I like this number. Um, medium projection so far, pretty, pretty stiff. And I don't think the ownership is quite um, in line with, with how high the projection is so far. I mostly agree with the projection too, because Oakland stinks. Um, now they, they got a couple of lefties that they can platoon against him at the top of the lineup, Jace Peterson, Ryan Noda type of guys. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, um, I think John Gray can pick apart this lineup. They're still pretty undisciplined over there. They're going to swing and miss a lot. Uh, and the slider is a very good pitch. So, I like I like Gray. I like the Rangers. Uh, pretty much zero Oakland for me, outside of maybe like a Jace Peterson. If I get too much John Gray or something like that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I hear you. Um, I, I what I want to. Yeah, what I I think that I'm looking at Texas, and the more I think about it, I think that they make a better secondary stack, like a three man. Sure. The only thing, I, the only problem with them is that like Sears doesn't he as 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 much as, much as he struggles, he doesn't walk a lot of guys. I think yep. he has two walks this season. Um, and Texas is not like, uh, this is, it's a good lineup. That's not overly patient. Um, so, it, and I, and, I, and when, when I'm stacking full, full five mans, I, I'd like to find a, a more patient stack. So just throw it out there. I'm not saying that, that you can't, I'm just saying that, that, that that's my, my takeaway. And I, and I'm I, gray may move up my list because one of the other guys who I love, and I think a lot of people love very likely will be canceled tonight, or at least very, very risky. Um, sure which we'll get to in just a, in just a few minutes. Um, do you have that game next to the Minnesota game next or Milwaukee? Yeah, we can get right to the Minnesota game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> sheets also frozen here. So we're, uh, okay. there we go. Uh, there we go. Um, oh, I do have Boston Milwaukee next, but we can get to the oh, Minnesota yeah, game. And, and... We can do Boston Milwaukee. That's fine. I'm ready. All right. Um, okay. So I, uh, well, I think Freddie Peralta down here is pretty damn good turn to play too. Um, we're showing some really low ownership on him and projection starting to climb a little bit from very early runs this morning. Uh, 10 to sub 10%. This is one of the few guys on the day that's got 30, 35 in the tank. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's a pretty good play. Both he and Otani, who we'll get to later, uh, ownership numbers really low on them, surprisingly. And this is, this is why I'm not, as high on Nola or even John Gray for that matter. Um, There's just so many other guys with plenty of upside that I think we can get to Uh, Freddie Peralta, definitely being one of them. Um, Nick Pavetta, not being one of them. I'm not going near him. He gives up too much hard contact on the barrel for me. Um, He's pitching to a full 79, 80% contact rate really to both sides. He walks lefties, gives up power to both sides. Like, no, thank you. Uh, so give me the Brewers and and give me pretty much all of them. Uh, I think you can play righties there too. Not really worried about price tags necessarily. I I mean I don't like 48 for Yelich just kind of in general, but this is an upside spot for him I think. And everybody else is pretty attainable. Willie Adamas at 52, it's actually kind of the bottom of his of his price range to be honest. Um, everybody else, I mean you can get to a Bryce Terang second base at 2100. That's a damn good play. So I like the Brewers here. Give me Freddie Peralta correlated teams as well at 10-2. I think this is fine. Like all of the numbers look great for Freddie. It's really only the control that's that's ever been a problem for him. It's not hard contact. It's not on the barrel or anything like that. It's just throwing strikes and walking people, you know. So if he's got the control, which he seems to have figured out over the last season plus, um, I mean, this is one of the better – raw dfs pitchers in the game he's just got elite upside Mm -hmm. and overall boston's pretty weak lineup now they let's uh let's caveat this i guess in the the early going here they've been pretty damn good uh against right he's only striking out a 19 percent clip so far Mm -hmm. so that is a little worrisome for sure um but from the left side they really only got devers and yoshida that you're really worried about 
Uh, Alex Verdugo's good hitter, but not a lot of raw upside for him. And all of the righties, I'm not I'm not worried about at all. You know, so I think we could take some Freddie Peralta pieces here. And this is a good projection here. It's at 17 points. It's in the same range as Hunter Brown, right? Um, you know, I, I think this is I think this is very attainable to play some Brewers pieces here, and uh, I like them quite a bit. How about you? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm on board with uh, Peralta as of right now. Um, I, I you know I know Boston's been okay, but again, remember they've played a lot of their games. Anytime they're away from uh, from Fenway, they they just aren't the same team hitting wise and. This is not the strongest. I mean, look, I, I, I look at this team and I look at three guys who the Dodgers couldn't quite keep on the line in the roster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because they yeah. didn't have room for them because they were too good. I mean, going to past years, this year they're not quite the same. Um, but yeah, with, with Turner and, and Verdugo and, and Kike, um, I, I'm I'm okay with that. And so I, I have a little bit of a different take with – I actually do like the Brewers a little bit as a stack – um, yep. but I also don't want to cross off Pavetta. I know that sounds weird All right. when you have everybody in these ranges and give me a, 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 a guy who's, who is literally all over the map and you never know what to expect from him. Um, but he does have upside against a team that chases way too much. Uh, they they, they have some hitters in their lineup. They don't, they are not patient. Um, I am, I am okay with taking a shot on Pavetta against a team that literally, I don't know if they've ever seen him before. Most of these guys, maybe they've seen him a couple of times, but I, I haven't, I haven't checked that out yet. I'm just okay with including him in my pool, but Peralta, Peralta and the Brewers bats again, more secondary for me. Um, but I do have them on my list uh, along with Texas as, as really solid secondary options. Uh, I still prefer Baltimore and Philly, but I'm definitely okay with taking shots on Bal on Milwaukee. Uh, also worth noting, I think you're going to find by the by the midway through the season that Boston's bullpen is very very bad. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, this seems going to be real bad. So I think it, uh, you know, to your point, I think this um, these early season numbers here, 19 percent K rate, 182 ISO, whatever, mm -hmm. um, in aggregate against right-handers, uh, those are going to come down. Um, yep. Pretty noisy so far, and still a short sample, even though it's like 500 plate appearances. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. The, I think the whole team's going to be bad, and really they've got two big league hitters on the team anymore, and that's that's Yoshida and, and that's Devers. Um, Devers may even be like one and a half hitters himself, you know, and, and everybody else is, is league average at best, um, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the lineup's going to be pretty bad. I think it's very attackable um, for Freddie and for the Brewers' offense as well uh, as you said i do think it's an interesting price tag though now that you mentioned pavetta um at 7600 i'm worried about the upside in general but you're right the brewers are still going to swing and miss their numbers early in the season pretty probably pretty noisy as well mm -hmm. in, in terms of the the, yeah, the they chase and the, and the whiff stuff and things like that they do have a couple other lefties that they brought up um that are going to hit righties really well so that's really where those uh where the mm -hmm. balance in those numbers is coming from but um yeah yeah like uh, i'm i'm totally with you uh not like like i i do like the brewers quite a bit for sure um not mm -hmm. like necessarily a, a single entry stack for me probably but um you know they're gonna be up there on the on the multi-entry list for sure yeah yeah absolutely um all, all right. right let's move it along we got unfortunately i've got another show in 15 minutes with sheets so i've got oh, okay cool gotta, gotta gotta flow along but but uh but i think those were all good points uh i'll just really i'll go real quick on the minnesota like this game it's gonna snow um it's 30 some odd degrees in in minnesota it seems almost guaranteed that it's going to snow it's a matter of how comfortable they're going to be playing baseball in it because i don't think it'll be constant I don't know that they're going to have any reason they really have to do that. The problem is you have a, my, uh, a National League team versus an American League team, which sometimes they, they at least the historical thing used to be those are harder to reschedule. I don't know if that's necessarily still the case. Um, but look, if this game were to play uh, in this in these cold temperatures, I think Tyler Molly would be very clearly one of the top pitchers, if not the top pitcher on the slate when you factor everything in against a weak Washington team that I believe has the lowest run total on the slate. Um, so I, uh, I, I would, I would take that the gamble. I'm not going to do anything with hitting in the snow. I understand there's some wind blowing out, but it's, it's just too ugly for me. Um, and mostly I want to want to keep this one quick because I, we very well may lose this game 
you know, by the time the show's been. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And honestly, it, at 30% ownership, I, I think there's other guys that we could probably play, yeah. even if the game did play, you know? Like, so I'm not wild about this. 35 degrees is awful, awful baseball weather for yep. pitchers too. You know, they get, it's hard to yep. grip the baseball. Um, so I'm not, I'm not crazy about really anything. And I think it, it's probably going to get canceled anyway. Um, we can quickly move on. Let's yep. just get to, to Casey and the, and the angels. Yeah, jump on uh, I, I like, I like the angels here a lot. And yeah, we, we have seen Shohei's ownership spike a little bit. Um, we've got some early, early day kind of noise coming up, but um, he'll be, you know, early runs we saw him at at six eight percent or something i was like there's no way that's gonna that's gonna persist all day um so now this looks a little bit better at about 20 percent or so and i'm still interested you know he's got the highest raw projection on the slate but again like anything over 20 21 points or something i'm gonna start to be like yo let's let's dial it back but this is the royals and uh, i i can make an exception in that in that instance. And this is Shohei, you know, um, he's got some of the best stuff in baseball mm -hmm. and we're not worried. The only thing we, we worry about with Shohei is throwing strikes and starting to split or, um, spray rather the splitter and, and the slider and just not being able to throw it anywhere near the plate. But I'm not overly worried. I like getting to him. I like getting to the angels as well. They're expensive, but, um, you know, well, you don't have to pay sixty three hundred for Shohei at least, so that's nice. Okay. You have to pay ten eight for him, unfortunately. But <laughs> um, you know, I did. A, we can get to Trout here definitely. Uh, Anthony Rendon doesn't strike out forty one hundred. That's fine. Ward is great at the top of the lineup, and you can mix in some of the cheaper pieces down at the bottom. Uh, I'm not touching anything about the Royals. This is a bullpen game for them. They're going to have Ryan Yarbrough come in after Taylor Clark here, and uh, Yarbrough gives up a, a ton of contact to both sides of the plate. So mm -hmm. I think uh, full-on correlated angel stacks are, are very well in play here. Um, and, and that's kind of where I am. Like Otani, a, a pretty good bit. What do you think? Yeah, like I, I, I'm high on Otani uh, as well. And it's just, you know, he's definitely going to be one of the, like he, I mean, he, Nola, Peralta, um, Brown, or, you know, at the, at the top, I like all of those guys. And uh, Otani is going to have actually not quite as much ownership as I was sort of thinking. I thought he would end up being a little bit more popular. And I, and I think that it may shift a little bit more from Noel. I know he's more expensive, but I still think he's going to be pretty popular. Um, I like, I like Otani and I am okay with the angels. It always feels weird when we can't play Shohei if we want to play the angels. But then again, like you said, you're saving, you know, it's a lot of money that you have to spend for him if you were to play him. And this is an expensive matchup in, and these, these just, you know, the, the, the long relief games combined with like the, the, the bullpen games, I just, when there's other, when there's a huge slate, I just tend to stay away from the stacking. It's good hitting weather in Oakland and, and sorry, in LA um, it's 77 degrees. It's got, I don't know what happened. We just got like a 20 degree bump on everything. Cause it's gotten way, way warmer here, but uh it's I, I'm 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 okay with the Angels. I it probably will be more of a secondary stack for me. Um, still waiting for Rendon to really become what he what I think he was. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was ready for him to be one of the best like 10, 15 hitters in baseball, and I just it just never it, it stopped materializing after that one year. Um, but I, I I do feel okay with the Angels. I just have him a little further back because um, I don't really love playing these situations. I, I am going to be interested in them against lefties in general, especially with you know, good hitting weather for, you know, all things being considered, but a little bit further back than the other stacks for me at the moment. Yeah, I hear you. I generally don't like doing it um, as well. And and they're probably going to, to miss the cut uh, for me as far as like a top three uh, or something, probably just a secondary stack for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get to uh, San Diego and Arizona. Uh, Seth Lugo on the mound. We can probably keep this pretty quick too. I, I'm not going to go near him. I think he's, he's flat overpriced and I'd be more interested, slightly more interested at like 7,500, but uh, I'm not dealing with this against, like he throws a sinker and it is an awful pitch for him just kind of in general. And it's an awful pitch against very left-handed heavy lineups. And that's certainly what Arizona is. Um, I like getting to the D-backs as a, a, a full-on really contrarian stack. You could use these guys as one of your mains here. And I like Allen on the mound for them as well at 9,600. I think he's another very interesting pivot right up there with Hunter Brown that you can just get right off of the 50% ownership that we're going to see on Aaron Nola. Uh, Zach Gallen, one of the few guys that still has 30 in the tank as well. Now, of course, now with Tatis back, right, this is a 
markedly more difficult matchup than than it has been earlier in the season. You know, but Tatis still gonna still get a whiff. You know, like he's still gonna strike out. He's still got a 25, 26% K rate or something. Um, so it's not like he and we saw that even at 2000 last night, he goes over five, right? So, right. uh, he's they're still attackable, and so far this season, they have been striking out against righties at a 26% clip, you know. So, right. definitely attackable are the Padres still. I think you can get to Gallon, um, elevated price tag for sure, but, uh, I think he's right up there. You can run some Hunter Brown, Zach Allen teams, and then play whoever the hell you want. Yeah, however you want, seriously. And and I think there's a lot of upside that you can get to uh, on the mound there. Uh, so I like the D-backs pretty much top to bottom here. Um, you can absolutely play the Padres. This is probably the best lineup in baseball on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, so go ahead, play him. Manny Machado, he's down at 4,600 now. It's starting to get a little crazy. Cronenworth at 35. That makes it very attainable to get to the Tatis. That's 51 now. Soto at 52 and Bogarts at five. Um, they're playable for sure. If you want to go after Zach Allen, I don't. Uh, I, I really respect this arm. So give me all of Zach Allen and a lot of the D-backs. Probably not much of the Padres here. Yeah, I, I'm having a hard time getting to, to Gallon. Um, and and maybe it's like, I mean, he's he's got some familiarity from pitching in the same division with some of these guys, although the say, you know, San Diego's team is a little different. Uh, it has not worked out well for him at all. He never has a good start against San Diego. Um, I think in, in, of, the, of the guys in the lineup, projected in the lineup today, I think he's thrown, I think he's pitched 102, it's 102 at bat, so it's not anything, actually 115 plate appearances. But he's walked 13 guys in those 102. He's given up eight home runs. He's only struck out 20. Um, I am a little worried the Padres are going to start to with the T's back go, go sure. on. Here, so I'm having a hard time getting to Gallon. Definitely not going to get to Lugo. Um, and I and I'm having I I, I definitely uh, am okay. It's a really good bullpen in San Diego, but I, I'm okay with like a little bit of the Diamondbacks lefties, like you said. And I'm okay with with playing some of the Padres like as as mini pieces. But honestly, they're they're going to be like right now they're showing up as the most popular team which is really strange against Zach Gallon that that would yeah be- super weird I think we said we've got some noise here on <laughs> Tatis's ownership yeah. still like he's showing 35 percent there's no way that happens so right. I, th- I think it was just kind of a, a data error that we've got pushed to the yeah. in the numbers so far that'll get corrected for sure and everybody else is under 10 percent so that makes more sense of course but you're dead right I mean Gallon's got what four ten nine starts against Arizona Mm-hmm. And he's popped through 15 points twice. Uh, he did pop for 34 and, and 30 points in both of those starts. But everything, all the other starts have been under 15. Um, so they have seen him well in the past. And, you know, that's absolutely an argument for, for getting off of Gallon um, yeah. for sure. But I'm with you. Like the prices on the on the Padres, I'm not uh, not super enthused about. And, and Gallon's still a good arm. I You know, I respect the arm. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. All right, uh, Seattle, say that, sorry, St. Louis and, and Seattle, what you got there? Yeah, well, I think we'd probably keep this quick. I'm not touching any, either of the arms. I like George Kirby, man, but uh, not in this matchup. Um, he, he's got bad breaking stuff and a lot of susceptibility to the right side. He gives up a lot of production there. Hard contact, on the barrel, a lot of average, a lot of power. Um, no thank you for, for Kirby, and I, I very rarely play Steven Matz. And I, I like the price tag on him, sure, at, at 73, because there is some upside for a 25-point game out of him. And the Mariners have been cold to start the season for sure, but I prefer to getting to uh, to offense on both sides here. Matt's has always had big, big problems to the right side of the plate, and that really hasn't changed. He's been not good at all to start the season and giving up power still. So uh, give me offense pretty much only in this game. I think it's a really cool late slate play. If you want to play some George Kirby, I think that's yeah. interesting, but uh, definitely not on the main slate. I think we got too many other arms to get to for me to get interested there. How about you? Yeah. My issue with Kirby, I love one thing I love about him is he does. He, he can just mow through people like, um, like I mean, not mow through people, like in terms of striking him out, he, he can just mow through innings because he's always around the plate. He doesn't walk anybody. Um, he strikes. Yep. Absolutely. He throws strikes. He really does. Um, as, as a lot of these, these young Seattle pitchers really seem to do. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I think he's a little below the other guys for me. I still don't think I, it's, I still think there's a chance I might use him. 
And I have mats um, in the same category, sort of. Um, I like the price tag. I think there's enough upside for it against a team that struggled. But when you're going to face potentially nine righties, certainly eight righties, I think yeah. that it's going to be a tough, a tough task for him. Um, so I, I could understand the bats. I just am, you know, Seattle, one of the worst hitters parks in baseball, another downgrade for St. Louis. Um, I think if I had to have any interest in, in the in the bats in this one and uh, heavy interest, it would probably be on the Mariners side. Um, yeah, for sure. I think a better better late slate play offensively than than maybe a main slate play. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on on the mat. I do like the price tag for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, uh, let's move over to the finale here. Uh, the, the late night hammer with uh, San Francisco and New York. What do you got here? Yeah, let's, uh, sorry, I had a phone call come in. Let's, um, yeah. let's switch over. All right. We've got uh, Joey Lucchese on the mound. Uh, he's coming back from, from Tommy John. So we don't have any numbers here in the sheet, but, um, Lucchese's always had really good stuff against lefties. He's, he's got a, a goofy windup. And he's really hard to pick up out of the hand, right? Kind of a herky jerky motion on the mound. And left handers have always had a really difficult time with that. Right handers, not so much, has been given up a, a bit more power historically to them. Um, but I think at 5,400, I think it's an interesting tournament play. He's definitely the best value played in this range. Um, and I'd certainly rather play him in San Francisco against the Giants, who strike out a boatload. Uh, in the early going here, 29% against lefties, short sample, but 63 WRC plus so far. They, they've been awful against against lefties, even though they have a lot of righties that they can platoon with. Um, I'm more on Joy Lucchese here. I think a lot of the risk is really priced in at 5,400. This is a big projection for a guy down at 5,400 median projection. And like I said, value score wise, he's going to pop really hard for you down in the lower range. So if you need to get up to an Otani or a Freddie Peralta or something like that and get super cheap, but also play an expensive stack, then I think this is one of the pieces that you could consider throwing in San Francisco tonight against a team that's overall not that potent, not that not very good. Mm -hmm. um, Di Sclafani on the other side, no thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm I just I very rarely play pitchers against the Mets. Um, and as of right now, in the early going, 440 PAs against righties this season, 16% strikeout rate in aggregate. 16 Jeez. as a team, and it, like that's a it's a video game number. So no thank <laughs> you for Disco. Give me some of the lefties for the Mets, definitely. Um, but that's pretty much it in this last game. Yeah, I I, I can get I can talk myself basically just into the Mets as a stack. I I, I don't think I'm going to because I think it's enough. There's enough other ones that I like. But I do think that the Mets as, as are are definitely reasonable. Um, and Lucchese, like, it feels weird to play a guy where we really have – I'd like to get a better feel for how many pitches he's going to throw tonight. Um, if for he sure. throws 75, he's in play. But then then doesn't it make make a case to maybe go back to our early play with Noah Davis? Um, it, with, with the real leash at 5,600? Yeah, sure, the matchup's tougher. But I feel like if you're talking about two guys in the price range – Give me the one with a ceiling for pitches, at least. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. My biggest fear with Lucchese here. But I, otherwise, I, I do have him on my list as a, as a potential. Um, and then I, I unfortunately have to run. But Goldie, any, any, anything you want to say before we wrap it up? We'll, we'll keep doing this every week, guys. We want to get me and Goldie definitely recording together at least once a week. So um, I, I just yeah, think man. it's nice to, to do these with you because you, you got a lot of in-depth knowledge more than maybe anybody else about baseball on our on our site for sure. Yeah, man. Just keep every keep uh, an eye out for the projections pushes, guys. We do have them up on the site, and we'll uh, we'll get these ownership numbers fleshed out. And um, you know, good luck to everybody that's punting tonight. Yep. Good luck, everybody, and we'll see you in the Discord, and we'll see you all day long. Thanks so much, Goldie. Uh, and uh, let's crush it, guys. Good luck. Good luck.